Hello and welcome to Easter Egg Hunting, a show that dissects your favourite games looking for hidden secrets and easter eggs. We're going to try our hardest to show you all and any easter eggs that we can find in any game, and we'll even be throwing in a bit of trivia as well. We've now reached part 3 on our journey through the original Metal Gear Solid, so enough chit chat, let's just carry on. After you get bored with Meryl slapping you about, we can carry on with the story as we have to head to the Commander's Room, which just so happens to be our second stop to an easter egg hunting paradise. After the short scene where Meryl gets possessed by Mantis, try viewing the game in first person mode. You'll find that the perspective switches to Meryl's vision instead of Snake's, which could be a foreshadowing to later events during the Mantis fight, where the first person mode is then replaced by Mantis's view. Then, once you meet Mantis, he'll demonstrate his true psychic powers to Snake by, again, breaking the fourth wall. He says that he will read your mind, and by reading your mind he means by reading your memory card, where he will then search out and comment about any saved game data from other Konami titles. The following game saves, and probably some others, provoke responses. Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, Silent Hill, ISS Soccer, Azure Dreams, Suikoden, and Poi Poi. And then, only on the Japanese version, Tokimeki Memorial, Police Noughts, and Snatcher. Police Noughts in the Japanese version as well, if the player has save files from both Snatcher and Police Nauts, it will trigger the following message. Psycho Mantis will say, So, you like Kojima's works? And then Kojima speaks in a voiceover saying, Thank you for your continuing support. In the Twin Snakes, Mantis will read off of these save files. Eternal Darkness, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Did you enjoy playing Eternal Darkness? You seem to like The Legend of Zelda, don't you? You've been playing Super Mario Sunshine, haven't you? So you've played Super Smash Bros. Melee before. If the player has none of these game save datas in their memory card in both versions, Mantis will then say, Hmm, your memory is completely clean. Flipping over to the Twin Snakes again, you may have noticed that the visual psych-outs used in this portion of the game are very reminiscent of the sanity effects used in Eternal Darkness. Furthermore, several voice actors and actresses played roles in both the Metal Gear Solid series and Eternal Darkness, including David Hayter, Kim My Guest, Jennifer Hale, Cam Clark, Paul Eiding, and Greg Eagles. Back on the PS1, during the battle with Mantis, if you just can't figure out how to avoid Mantis's mind control, give Colonel Campbell a quick call, and then keep on calling him until the fourth call, where he'll then give you a little hint to defeating Mantis. He's using his psychic ability to read your controller's moves. That's how he's evading your attack. If we then decide to die without changing controller ports, you'll then get a call from him that reveals the true secret to defeating Mantis. Plug your controller into controller port two. After the battle with Mantis, he then states that he is unsure whether whether or not Snakes and Meryl's futures lie together, which is actually alluding to the game's two endings, one in which Meryl survives and the other in which she dies. Also, the script in the original Japanese release had Mantis mention that his helping Snake on his deathbed felt nostalgic, though this was changed to it feels kind of nice in the English version. However, in the Twin Snakes, this was then changed back to the former. According to Hideo Kojima, the nostalgia that Mantis said he was feeling was due to him sensing his own mother's emotions during childbirth, where she had used the last of her dying strength to help her son survive, similar to Mantis's own actions towards helping Snake upon his death. And back on the Twin Snakes, if you check around the portraits in the Commander's Room, you may notice that the people portrayed are actually, in fact, Reohai Kitamura, Dennis Dayak, and Hideo Kojima. Psycho Mantis's powers were actually inspired by another fictional character from the 1978 film, The Fury. After another long cutscene and some progress into the caves portion of the game, once we get to the end of them, if you hit Meryl when the wolf dogs are around, she'll actually end up calling them over to attack you. What are you thinking? However, if you hit her and then hide immediately in your cardboard box, they'll pee on you instead. Now that's nice. After more stuff happens and everything seems to be going along just fine, tragedy strikes. This is, of course, one of your many encounters with Sniper Wolf, shooting Meryl as bait to lure Snake out. According to Kojima, being a Stanley Kubrick fan, this specific scene with Meryl continuously getting shot in the open by a sniper rifle was based on the famous scene in Kubrick's war movie, Full Metal Jacket. After this, you'll be told to grab a sniper rifle to battle Wolf. But before you do this, at this point, flip on the Twin Snakes. If you shoot Meryl after she's been shot already by Wolf, you'll get some pretty angry responses from your teammates. Snake, what the hell? Are you trying to kill Meryl? Have you gone insane? Keep on playing the Twin Snakes for this next bit as well. Once you get back to where you started, if you want to, have a lounge around the tank hangar. Due to the improved graphics on the Twin Snakes, you'll actually see that the graphics user interface is visible on many computers that you'll stumble into in the game. However, back on point, in the tank hangar, behind a level 2 door on the upper level, you'll actually find a computer with the Silicon Knights website on it. Pretty cool. Anyways, going back to the story. You've got the rifle and now need to fight Wolf. 
After beating her, you can then wander around this area for a second. If you start sniping the rats along the metal platform above where Wolf was, you'll get some mildly distressed calls from your teammates. Snake, we don't need a rat trap. We need someone to stop that goddamn nuke from getting launched. After everything seems dandy and you're ready to move on, you'll end up captured. Well, crap. So at this point, Snake will be thrown into a torture room where another cutscene plays. During this cutscene, you can hear Revolver Ocelot say, We're going to launch that nuke and ride it all the way into history. As we've established that Kojima is indeed a Kubrick fan, this may also be a reference to the bomb riding scene from one of his great movies, Doctor Strangelove. And just before we get to the proper torture, Ocelot will warn you in-game, When your life reaches zero, the game is over. There are no continues, my friend. And then along with this warning, if you've played the game and not saved that often, Ocelot will decide to taunt you and try to make you submit before you've even started. It's been a long time since you saved your game. If your body can't survive the torture, it'll be game over. You really want to travel down that long road again? Come on, I won't tell. Why don't you just give up? Thanks for watching and let us know if we've missed any easter eggs. Keep in mind that we're finding these eggs in order of appearance in the game and there's plenty more stuff to come. If you want to see more of my stupid stuff, you can have a look at my most recent video game review. Relevance? What's that? You can also check out more videos to the side and don't forget to check out vgfacts.com. Thank you again and take care.